Hi everyone, welcome to Kuna Informative Talks with Lerato and Cherie. Hi, hi, how are you? Good and you, good. So today's topic is about auditory processing disorder, uh, previously known as central auditory processing disorder. And yeah, we're going to talk about what it is and what types you get, the diagnosis of it and the treatments and what teachers and parents can do to help. Yep. Very interesting topic. It's it's very interesting and it all goes back to the brain once again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and also but you know what's amazing is that in the past there's a lot of talk about uh, neuroplasticity mm. where in the past people believed that the brain can't be changed. Mm. But neuroplasticity it explains exactly the opposite that through doing active programs it really can be mm. rewired and changed and mm. accommodated, you know, yeah. which is really cool. Oh yeah, which is really interesting. I know Dr. Caroline Leaf speaks about it very so profoundly oh, and but... makes an illustration with trees that look at the good trees and the bad tree bad tree. And both of them it depends on what they are feeding themselves. Yes. So what or what we are feeding so basically, if you feed your brain with water and good things, positive thoughts, then your brain rewires into positive thoughts. And same thing with yes. negative thoughts. If you constantly thinking about negative things, then your brain is wiring in that way. So that is actually the same illustration with all of these learning difficulties that we can try to rewire um, our brain obviously some of them not completely healed no. we can we, we can never say that now the child is completely healed or they their brain is now i would say normal yeah. but uh, it will still be different there there's still that neurodiversity that yes. will still be okay absolutely there's no cure for it it's yeah. making it work better yeah but there's no cure yeah but yeah auditory processing is just basically the way that the brain processes language or sound and uh, it's not necessarily a hearing problem mm. yeah. but it does have a link to what the ear hears mm. or how the sound is uh, it's difficult to decipher the sound yeah. uh, or originate or to figure out where the sound is originating from yeah. so especially with a lot of background noises mm. that is very distracting mm. for someone who has auditory processing difficulties yeah. And yeah, the different, uh, the different, uh, there's different types of auditory yes, processing yes, as well. Yes, those types. Yeah. And I know that we, uh, the first one, which is uh, quite far common, is the hypersensitivity yes. of the sound. That if they obviously there's a lot of sound, yes. they get uncomfortable. Whether in the classroom, um, I know there was a child particularly. Uh, that would just hide under the table whenever there's just so many noises in the classroom yes. because that they could they just could not handle the sound. <laughs> I have so. a funny story actually that just made me think of that um, with Brendan because he had that as well. He was about four or five years old and we would have a birthday party for him. And we lived right next door to my mom. Mm. And we'd have this crowd of people coming to celebrate his birthday. And the next minute he'll pack his little suitcase and he's off to grandma's house because he wants none of this noise. <laughs> and we couldn't figure out like, what's happening. They're having this amazing party, this cake, this toys, this presents, uh, his friends, and he just He's just not back to spare he his little suitcase and he's off to grandma's house. <laughs> I love the fact that <laughs> the humor of him every, actually taking yeah. the suitcase and like packing his stuff at four years old, like, yeah. oh, I'm done with you yes. guys. I'm out of here. Because of the sound. Yeah. So, wow, uh, it, it's quite interesting and amazing. And you see all of these things. And at that time, obviously, you did not understand what was the issue. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Yeah. So that was one of the hypersensitivity ones. It actually causes nausea as well. Mm -hmm. It could cause um, outbursts. Mm -hmm. And it can actually cause physical pain. Okay. It really yeah. causes physical pain. I've mm -hmm. called Brennan many times. 
cringing and mm. grabbing his ear mm. uh, because of the pain of certain pitches and yeah. sounds and things. Yeah. So that's one type. Yeah. yeah. The other one is decoding. Yes. Obviously, like for instance, when you say uh, cat, sometimes they don't hear the eh, yes. they just heard cut. Yes. So they can't make up what you really said. Yeah. And I remember there's a funny story you told me about Brendan. Yes. I asked, it was just the other day actually, because this happens on a daily basis where he uh, confuses words because of the sounds. So I would ask, would you fetch me a glass of water please? And he heard, would you fetch me water cheese? And then he packs <laughs> up laughing. So it's, it's nice that we can have fun with it as well. Yeah. So I constantly have to go, no, that's not what I said. I said, <laughs> please <laughs> and then he'll laugh and go oh okay it makes sense now <laughs> yeah talking so, about that they actually do say that um can you come again what did you say so yes. that's that's another um i would sign. say sign of it because yes. they didn't understand what you have said because yes. of the sound yeah. so basically the the ear heard it yes. but the brain could not recept it yes. and to make up the word that you were trying to say yes. it's quite in interesting it, it is it really is yeah yeah so that's the second one which is part of the decoding yeah there's another one which is integration mm -hmm. where they struggle to multitask yeah um again especially with background noises yeah and also if for instance if a teacher speaks and they're supposed to take notes mm -hmm. they can't do that at all because that's multitasking yeah, yeah. That they need to focus on one task oh, at a time okay. or uh, listening to a conversation whilst typing on the computer or the phone that's also they they cannot do that so note taking for these kids are not advisable yeah not they, advisable they, take a look, yeah, they, yeah. they will not they will not be able to do that yeah. and that's why maybe a teacher is uh, teaching and expecting the students to write after some 10 minutes when yeah. you go around and you check they have not written anything because yes. they basically or sometimes they will start drawing yeah uh, use their imaginations yeah. while while you're talking because you obviously most of the time especially if you're speaking in high pace yes. they you've lost them oh, they, no, completely the concentration is gone so they'll start doing something else and sadly yeah. if, if as a teacher you don't understand you think that they're naughty they don't listen but it's because of the difficulty yeah. that they have yes yeah. and the other one would be organization defect uh, yes, organization defect, which is related to recalling information. Uh, so hearing difficulty with background noises. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's like a, as you would have a blur with the eye, it'll be a blur for the sound, mm. kind of. It'll blur it out completely. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. And there's another one, uh, prosodic, uh, the prosodic side, which is the tone, mm. certain tones as well, they find yeah. very difficult. Yeah. And also uh, being able to read or understand punctuation. Punctuation, yeah. Because with different types of sentences, that's where they basically uh, most of the time struggle. Like, if we, for instance, your command statement, yeah. your question statement, and your maybe exclamation statement. Yeah. So they can't make a distinct a difference from there that yes. maybe you're saying, can you please... Uh, can you please take the cuffs? Is the question actually yes. right? And then that obviously, as a question, they might take it as a statement, or they might take it as a command. Yes. So they don't necessarily know how to distinguish yeah. the different types of sentences. There's a lovely tip we could share as well. Yeah, that has a, it takes the basic punctuation, like a question, exclamation, and a period. I think there's another one, a comma. I think. And it gives a little story, their little family. There's mm. a background story to them. So it gives them characters, which is a, a way of learning. This is how kids learn through mm. fun, exaggerated, imaginative ways, mm. you know. Mm. So that was a nice way to for him to grasp, okay, this guy's a question mark, this guy's a mm. and also when doing question marks and when you do point out to them that they're doing they're working with question marks or exclamation mm. sentences is to exaggerate those sentences mm. you said what you know like mm. oh it's okay and then because you can see that little 
to go, oh, wait, it's a question mark. So I must put a question mark there. Oh, wait, I'm shouting now or I'm expressive. So it's exclamation marks. So, so that helps as well. Yeah, it, it really and helps a lot. Yeah, it really helps yeah. a lot. So how can they be diagnosed? Because someone else could yeah. ask that, okay, I have a child. I think they might have it. They might have it. Uh, yes. How can they be diagnosed? So diagnosis works through a, a certified um, audiologist and they do specific tests where they um, work specifically on the deciphering sounds mm -hmm. as well as testing their tolerance with background noises. So there's specific tests that these certified audiologists use specifically for auditory processing. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, one of the things that I have noticed with most of these uh, learning barriers is that you really need, as a parent or as a teacher, need a specialist for yeah. this. You just can't take any self-assessment, like I said in the previous uh, episode. You really need a certified Yes. Certify specialist for each of them because it's quite important yes. and you don't want any misdiagnosis of a child. Yes. I would I would use the self assessment as an elimination to undergo too many costs. Yeah. You know, yeah. and just to see where you're at and then obviously to get the diagnosis. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah. Do the certified so, specialist. Exactly. Yeah, that's true because the self assessment they do help in terms of navigating around yes, the finances. Absolutely. Because if you're going to go all through the specialist at times it yeah. is costly. It is. And yeah, some parents don't even have the money to go through all of those specialists. So using it using them with caution, yes. I could say, that could be the best way. All right. And how to treat it we have also specialists once again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which we, is the speech and yes. the occupation therapy. Yes. And I know that you, Brendan, used to have a speech therapist also. Yes, he did for many years. And uh, she used uh, sound therapy. And I'm sure the speech therapists would have the same. They use specific kinds of sound therapies that plays off certain pitches that sort of helps with the rewiring of the neural pathway, specifically for the auditory processing. Very interesting if you do the research as well. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's quite a few programs, different names, but the basics stays the same. Mm -hmm. So they would either listen to the sounds while they're busy with occupational therapy, mm -hmm. uh, or it would be, uh, there's also I, uh, iPad and PC games that you could download where you have to use your headphones that also plays a specific sounds whilst the kids play the games. I think that's nicer for the younger ones, yeah. you know, for the little ones, because they think they're being entertained with mm. uh, games, you yeah. know, so... Yeah. yeah, and especially the younger ones, they love sound, especially. <laughs> they just love anything that has sound, yeah. they, they just love it. And I know that in schools, that especially predominantly the UAEs, that you will have an LSA that will work together with the specialist. Yes. So whatever the specialist is doing during their session, they will sometimes uh, give out tips and yes. recommendation that this is what you can do in your inclusion tips. Yes. And then during the week when the, the, speci the specialist, which is the speech yeah. therapist, is not there, the LSA will then continue with that. Mm -hmm. And at home, again, uh, the parents will still continue. So all of that um, support for your child really helps for yes. their progress. It really is amazing if everybody can be on board and work together. It yeah. makes a big difference for the child. Yeah, it does. It really does. It, it really does. Even their progress, it, it becomes more rapid yes. than it is. But obviously, you have to be patient of the process. And yeah. The child, all child are different. Yeah. And all of them will then take the program in a different way. The program that will work for this child may not work to that child. Yes. So it's just uh, trying and seeing which yes. one is best for that specific child yeah. to deal with that uh, specific learning barrier so yeah also tips that the talking about this then we can go into tips on yes. how teachers even parents because parents play a significant role in helping the kids even at home with their homework with reading so yeah we can dive yeah. into that the tips yes the tips for our teachers specifically because i mean teachers work mostly with the kids at school yes. with their academics so uh written instructions uh, using recordings, mm -hmm. children can listen to it later because if there's background noises, especially in a classroom, mm -hmm. like a 
imagine it's difficult to keep the classes quiet <laughs> all the time. So yeah, because they're kids, they're going to have chitty chats and all that. So yeah. yes, specifically uh, recordings, uh, written instructions that they could take home, mm -hmm. uh, or recorded lessons, uh, speaking slow yeah. and having clear pronunciations also mm -hmm. helps a mm -hmm. lot. Step by step instructions and just allowing extra time as well yeah. for them to respond because mm. the processing takes time. Takes time, yeah. Then also repeating. Yeah. Repeating oh, yes. the sentence that actually yes. helps. Repeat. Because yes. Yeah. Because sometimes if you say it the first time and expect them to understand, they might still be processing it. But by the time you say it again then they they yeah. catch the other word or the sound that they didn't catch on the yeah. first time you said the sentence. Yeah. So it's, it's it's quite important that you repeat the instruction and be slow and if possible one on one with them after telling the class the instruction or before they start the lesson go to them go through with them and make sure yeah. and also looking them in their eye that they look at your lips yes. it helps a lot because when they're looking at your lips they could hear they could tell rather what you're yeah. saying so it's quite important having that uh, getting their attention right yes getting making them. sure that they have your attention yeah and you can voice the instruction the instruction yeah yeah wow that's a wrap for today that's another one we're done thank you so much for listening and do you have any words uh yeah, just uh, many things to come still. So what we'll do is some of there will be tips and we'll put links mm. in there as well to do further research. Yes. It's very interesting. It's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And yeah, keep going with the research. It's the best you can do. Yeah, that's the best you can do. And yeah, look at the latest research. We're going to drop yes. uh, all of the information yes. on our description. And please uh, like, subscribe. And thank you so much. See you next week.